Hi everyone, I'm Stephanie Weaver. I'm the author of The Migraine Relief Plan and I'm a home cook and a cookbook author. And I started this series called Quarantine Kitchen to try to help people figure out how to cook, how to use their kitchens, how to cook safely, how to cook um, in a, uh, without spending a lot of money. So, uh, And hope, while you're locked down. And while you're locked down, yeah. And, my, and that's Microwave Boy on the camera. Hello, Steph. This is my uh, quarantine buddy. And our golden retriever, Daisy, is probably going to walk in through the kitchen at some point. So, just so you know. So today I want to talk about, this is uh, part two of the Kitchen Tool series, pans. What do you actually need to make food in? And I wanted to start with uh, something that probably a lot of people have and don't even realize it. Uh, if your oven has a broiler uh, on the bottom usually, there's usually, this pan usually pulls out under the broiler. So it's a two-part uh, two part situation. Um, this is my neighbor very kindly loaned me hers. Uh, there's a top part and a bottom pan. And you can do a lot with these two items. So, um, so you can cook bacon on this pan and the fat will drip through to the bottom. Bake it, not broil it, bake it, otherwise you might, it might catch on fire. Um, you can bake hamburgers or burgers on this pan and again the fat will drip through to the bottom. You can also capture that fat in a jar and to use it to cook other things. Very delicious. You can put uh, oil on this pan and use it to bake flat things or roast flat things and you can roast a chicken in this pan. You might want to line it with foil but you absolutely can do that. You could even probably make a lasagna in this pan if you wanted to or cabbage rolls or lasagna rolls or any kind of baked pasta dish. I would probably line it, you know, clean it obviously, line it with foil. This is a super versatile pan that you may already have in your kitchen and not even realize it. So I wanted to start there. You could also bake cookies on this side or this side. So again, uh, I for that right there. Yeah, he's a fan. <laughs> so super helpful, and thank you to my neighbor for loaning me her pan. Okay, so that's the first one. So then we've got cookie sheets. Okay, so I've got a bunch of different kinds. Bought them over the years. This is super fancy. You don't need that. All looks very nice. Um, this is probably what y'all have if you've got one, which is what we, what we always used to call a cookie sheet. Uh, it's a rimmed baking sheet. Notice that it's a dark surface. That means it conducts heat faster th so things will cook faster. And this is a similar type except it's not fully rimmed, meaning the corners are open. Not super helpful if anything is going to drip off what you're cooking because it will spill out when you move it. So don't necessarily recommend this, although I use this primarily like under the broiler to broil peppers and things like that. Um, I bought it for the patina at a, at a garage sale. Um, so if you're going to buy one pan, like if you don't have any of these types of pans at all, buy this. This is a half sheet pan. It's a relatively recent purchase. I use this at least once a week. Roasting vegetables, baking cookies. Uh, you can roast meat on it, you can roast a pork on it, uh, pork chops, you can do, do any sheet pan recipe that you've heard of, that's what they're talking about. Now this is called a half sheet pan because the full sheet pans are double this size, that's what they use in commercial kitchens. But this is a commercial kitchen grade and I would recommend trying, uh, if you're ordering online, trying a kitchen supply store online as opposed to the big retailer which is slammed right now you're going to get better pricing you're going to have more options and you know if you're going to buy these they also come in a quarter size and that will be my next purchase because i love to roast vegetables i love to roast tons at a time and i'm finding that i kind of want two small ones i have two of this size so if you're just if you don't have any of these pans buy one of these and you'll be good to go one or two of these good to i go. would rather clean the smaller ones so yes he'd rather clean. he is we don't have a dishwasher we have Microwave Boy and he does all the dishes, which is awesome. Okay, if you're buying food storage containers, um, this uh, is one type of snapware. The reason I'm recommending these is that these are Pyrex and you can bake in them. So if you have anything like this, especially if you're cooking for one or two people, you can make a big, like um, my friend Liz Dolan did moussaka a couple days ago, and she was using pans like this. This is perfectly great, because then you can stick them, once they're cool, stick them in the freezer, 
and then pull it out, thaw it overnight in the fridge, or sometimes I take two days if it's a full casserole. But you can bake it right in this pan, and that's what's super useful. So you may have one or two of these around and not realize you could bake in them. I wanted to be clear that that was the case. Okay, now, if you don't have any pans, what happens is a lot of times people will buy a whole set of pans. Um, they're usually kind of on sale. They usually maybe are lower quality pans. Um, but people think, oh, I kind of like the knife block. The, oh, I need the whole set. Well, you really don't. You really only need a cookie sheet, something to bake in, which, uh, which could be your broiler pan, and a nonstick skillety type thing. Ideally, that can go in the oven and then some kind of big pot with a lid. That's really all you need to do most cooking. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about what those options look like. So when I say it, it's nonstick, so this is a classic nonstick pan, this is an all clad, um, has a metal handle. The reason that's important is A, you need to make sure that you put use a pot holder to move it because the handle will start to get hot. But you can put it the whole thing in the oven, so if you're making a frittata, which I'm probably gonna demonstrate next week, you can start it on the stove, get it set, and then put the whole pan in the oven. You can do pork chops and vegetables in here, things like that. But if it has a plastic handle, you cannot put it in the oven and the handle will melt. So that's why those are good to have. Um, another option is uh, cast iron. They are excellent pans. They do need a little bit more love and attention because you have to make sure you keep up with the seasoning. Uh, we wash them. What, what is seasoning? So the seasoning is essentially the non-stick coating that builds up. Um, it's initially applied by putting vegetable oil on the pan, baking the pan at a low temperature, letting it cool, and repeating that process twice. It polymerizes the oil on the pan, creating a non-stick surface that's completely free of chemicals because you're using a vegetable oil to create it. And then you, when you finished you know, dinner, you scrub it, you can use a little bit of soap, it won't, because the polymerized fit, finish won't just automatically wash out with soap, but then we always put it on the stove, turn the burner on, make sure the pan's completely dry, and I put a little bit of oil or shortening on it, just to keep that finish going. If you don't want to deal with all that, then go with a nonstick. But these are great pans, they're fantastic to cook in, and, um, and they just get better over time. And they're relatively inexpensive, and once things get back to normal, you will find these at yard sales for not very much money at all. But Lodge is a great brand. <laughs> Daisy just needed a new toy. So. Um, so so, if you want to invest in stuff right now, you know, one of those is great. Let's move on to pans with lids. So this is, um, so I got this at a, on sale. It's a Le Creuset, but I got it at a sale. So you can see it's pretty beat up when I got it, a little chipped. Works perfectly fine. So chili, soup broth, um, you could steam something in this, like a steamed cake, you, if you had a container that fit in there, you could steam something, you could make tamales in here with a steamer in there, you could steam vegetables, you're definitely going to need something with a lid, make pasta, you're going to need something to boil water in, so you're going to need something with a lid. I'm going to ask you something, mm -hmm. so is that, there's like a liner? So this is, so Le Creuset is, um, is a French brand. This is a, uh, I'm not sure what the metal is, but then it's got a ceramic coating uh -huh. attached to it, um, which makes it pretty much non-stick. They're very expensive if you buy them new. In my mind, they're very expensive, um, but they last forever. So this was a cooking school that had a sale of used equipment, and I still might have spent 15 or $20 on this thing, even though it was already beat up, because it's a little crusade. Um, so, but, but I will have this forever. Like, I will have this till I die, which hopefully will not be this year. <laughs> um, and then um, the other option is something like, um, oh, you can cook rice in here, pasta, um, any kind of grains. So, um, so a pan like this is great. However, you could also buy something slightly larger if you have the room which would do the, all of those same functions. So you can, I do make pasta in here. This is a uh, Calphalon. This is stainless steel, also pretty much nonstick. Sometimes we, if we really burn something, we have to soak it, but it cleans up pretty, pretty beautifully. And what's nice with the glass lid is you can actually s mostly see what's going on. So you can see if something comes to a boil, you can adjust the temperature without opening the lid. You can do a braise in here. This entire thing will go in the oven, which is helpful for braising. So you can start things on the stove, put it in the oven. So if you're gonna be ordering anything, you know, this is a fantastic brand, but they are not cheap. 
Um, but you do, the thing is what I tr wanted to try to show you is you don't need, you know, 10, 15, 20 pots and pans. You really only need four or five and just get the best quality you can afford, you know, given your circumstances because the better quality that you have, the longer it will last. So the non-sticks do have to be replaced every couple years because no matter how much you spend on them, the finish starts to degrade. Um, but this pan I'll have forever. And so this was worth, you know, me investing in because I know I'll have it forever. I love cooking in it. You know, things don't stick. I get beautiful browning. But again, like I used to have much thinner quality pans. You have to watch the temperature more closely. Um, things are much more likely to stick, much more likely to burn. So, but you know, just whatever is with, within reason. But I just wanted to be clear that you don't have to like order a whole set of anything. Um, I like having stuff match, so I have more Calphalon than I do other stuff. Um, I basically kind of have Calphalon and Lodge, but that's just because I'm anal retentive and, you know, um, I've been around a while and I'm privileged. So, um, but I just wanted to be clear, like, you know, you can get a lot of mileage out of this and it comes with your oven. So don't feel like, oh, I have to order all this stuff in order to cook. Um, you know, one pan with a lid, one nonstick skillety thing, something to bake on, um, maybe something to bake in, you're good to go. So I hope this was helpful and we'll see you again soon. Please um, share this if you found it helpful. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube, please visit my page, Stephanie Weaver MPH, and follow me. And you can also follow me at S Weaver MPH, which stands for Masters of Public Health. And I hope you guys are staying well and healthy indoors. Bye.